Hey everyone, Jason here from Off The Beaten Path and we're picking up uh, at our lunch stop on day two on the McAllister River there um, and heading south from there down the McAllister River track. Um, we follow that uh, all the way down um, onto what I think is Bull Spur track. Um, reasonably steep little track there uh, and then up onto the road there. Follow that south past Glen Cairn now we didn't, um, we, when we got down here on Blencan Road, there's the link through to the Lycola Jameson Road. We didn't take that because at this time back in January, um, there was actually a closure on the section of the road between this link road here and um, Lycola. So we stayed on Target Creek Road and followed that uh, south into Lycola. Now today we were originally going to go up and camp on Mount Wellington, but we're a bit later than um, I had thought we were going to be and the weather wasn't that great. Uh, so we decided to head south. Um, so we took the Bitumen Road, Lycola Road south to my old friend, the Burgoyne's Track. Um, so those of you that follow the channel will know Last time I was in this area, I didn't get to do the eastern side of the Burgoyne's track because the car broke down and we ended up calling recovery guys and so it went. Uh, so this time we took the eastern side of the Burgoyne's track, crossed the McAllister. So we're starting today's trip at the lunch stop on the McAllister River, cracking spot. Um, Matt had some luck uh, catching some fish in the river there. Uh, cooked, we cooked up a nice lunch there um, using the Drifter Kitchen on the back of the Pajero there. And wasn't too much longer after that, and we were on our way again, heading south on the McAllister River track. Now I have to say that along with the Caledonia River track, um, McAllister River track is definitely up there as one of my favourite tracks that I've driven in the high country. Super scenic. Um, not real difficult, although the end sections at the southern end where you're exiting out, um, they are a little more challenging on, um, I think it's black soil track or something, um, and would be much more challenging if the weather was less conducive and the track was a bit wetter. Not surprisingly, coming up to another crossing here in the McAllister River, Really cool little rock formation over on the left hand side with a little cave under it. Um, just one of the many scenic spots that we saw along this track. Luca who was with us has done this track many times but typically coming from the south, traveling north, hadn't actually noticed that before. There it is there. footage shot from inside the car. As you can see the windscreen is uh, less than clean which is why I usually mount the GoPro on the outside of the car. Much clearer picture. So many spots though you could easily take an entire day, couple of days if you wanted to do the Caledonia River and McAllister River tracks and find a couple of good camp spots and if you're into fishing and that was your thing, throw a rod in. Uh, I know Matt would be more than happy to spend a couple of days down along the McAllister River here. Uh, that's for sure. So that's the same crossing, uh, some footage here shot from Luca's car crossing it with uh, Matt's Prado just in front. Now, as I said earlier in this trip, um, none of these crossings were particularly deep um, at this time of year when we've done them. And most of the track was a pretty easy drive. It varied a lot um, in terms of the track surface and the, the bush, um, but uh, all of it was really quite scenic. A few little rivulets like that running across the track in various places. 
wasn't too long though and we knew we were in for some fun so I think that's coming up just shortly the first sign was this vehicle pulled over on the side of the track oh no actually this guy's the fishing guy so no I was right this is the spot so vehicle pulled over, 79 series in the middle of the track, bunch of people on the side of the track. Yeah, it looks like an issue. Yeah. Through here is not too bad, like it's only, it's only that, that deep, right? Right. Yep. But you'll have to winch it in, in and out, like out of it. Yep. Then again, I weigh three and a half tonnes, so I'm not so much lighter than that. Yeah, especially when I'm in the car. <laughs> That's where all mine is, mate. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, but you're also five miles long in that <laughs> So yeah, bit of an issue there. It is a bypass track that's been made. Um, of course I wasn't gonna drive that when the opportunity was here to have a crack and try and make it through. And that was that. That exit was quite steep. Did not see that coming. <laughs> and we're not going forwards, we're not going backwards. As you can see, the all terrains now look almost like slicks. We're not going to get water in. Right. Yeah. Had the recovery gear ready. So yeah, ran the winch out to a, a cooperative tree there on the left hand side. And you can see even with the winch, no traction to be had in that mud. Really soft, probably a little bit heavy on the throttle there. See the winch is doing the work, the tyres are just cutting through the mud. Once again that worn winch has uh, done its job. Luca there, just checking the spool for me with the cable. When you're winching off to the side like that, obviously the cable or rope, whatever you're using, can tend to bunch up on one side. And just like that, we're up and out. So again, tried to drive the next section, thought that looked all right. Um, and Luca ran the winch cable along just in case we did get stuck, but no issues there, it certainly wasn't the bog hole that the uh, the first side was, so drove through that, no no worries at all. To walk through that, Dave. <laughs> trying to keep the shoes clean. Matt kindly filming me. I suppose if you fall over in the mud, you at least want to get it on film, right? But I didn't that time. So Luca bringing his GU down. He's taking the same line as me. And he's got twin locks in that, and he's running mud terrain tyres. That was the diff. And he's given it a good go, pretty much the same result. Apply the brake and drive through it. <laughs> so again, I'd left my uh, tree protector hooked up on the tree. I was fairly sure we were going to need it. You 
you can see there, Lucas just idling really nicely, um, letting the winch do the work. Just the barest amount of throttle. Not spinning the wheels at all. And you can see his, whether it's the throttle control or the mud terrain tyres, his tyres have actually climbed up on the mud a lot, a lot better than the all terrains that I'm running. Probably a bit of both. Ow. And once again, he's uh, yep. he's through. You should be right and to we'll, that in. We already knew that he was going to be the winch for the part. second section. Bronze paint job there on the front end for him. Luca is running the TB48, so 4.8 litre petrol. Now, Matt, without a lift, has elected to take the bypass track. We had already seen one of the Prados in the group going the other direction drive this. So a reasonably tight little track uh, and pretty rough. I'd say it's only been sort of pushed through in the last little while by people not wanting to drive those bog holes. Maybe they didn't have a winch or maybe they didn't have a lift and didn't want to clog up their alternators and starter motors with mud. You can see there's a little tree stump there in the middle. But um, Matt had enough clearance to get over that. Now this is the, the very tricky section. Sort of fitting, um, you're not going to get a a 200 series or something big through here, but the Prado fits, albeit kind of just between these trees with the mirrors folded in. Very tight little fit through there. And of course, when your car's on a bit of an angle like that, you've got to have somebody spotting to keep an eye on the uh, the roof rack and anything you've got up above the tops of your doors to make sure that's not going to contact on the trees. Keep coming the way you are. And just like that, he is through and can swing back onto the main track. You're free to go. You can see everything in front of you now. down into the ruts there in the mud and um, driven it through nicely. Here's yours. Oh. So a little bit of an obstacle there and how much mud did we pick up? A fair bit. You can see there front wheels nicely mud filled as are the back wheels. Oh. Yeah, good. I flicked it. One of those times where having the uh, jury on the back with water in it uh, certainly comes in handy. Lower control arms have picked up a bit of mud. And Luca's GU's had a new paint job basically on the front there. You can see, yeah. Uh, you just wanted to make an impact on his video. Didn't front, you? front bar and the axles and everything have sort of picked up uh, quite a bit of mud in his case already starting to drop off. And after that bog hole, it really wasn't too long. And what a surprise, yet another crossing of the McAllister River. And 
all these crossings, nice firm rocky bottoms. Um, we never sort of felt like we were going to lose traction or anything. Um, this one's maybe a touch deeper than some of the others, but still not a deep crossing. A um, couple of big rocks there on the side, so you really do want to stay on your line. Uh, but really good entrances and exits. Little track on the right down to a camp spot there. Lucas just cruised through in the GU and now that's bringing the Prado through. Nice and steady. You can see there, you know, even at this depth, the water has gone up to the sort of the top front leading edge of the bonnet, so you definitely want to snorkel, um, even in these shallow o'clock crossings, because the last thing you want to do is be sucking water into your engine. Now we should have kept account of just how many of these crossings there were. There was a lot. Very scenic. I think every time Matt saw a view like that as we were coming through a crossing, he was itching to stop and, and throw the line in. And as you can see, look, apart from that one bog hole, which, uh, you know, will probably get sorted out, um, it's not a difficult track. You can see there, hiker or another fisherman, bit of a camp spot down here on the river. We didn't see heaps of people on the track, but we did see a few camping. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, as I keep saying, popular with the fishermen. We saw quite a few people who had set their vehicles up and camped and then waded down river and were working their way back up the river uh, with their fishing rod. The track does climb up away from the river at times and then works its way back down. But this section through here wasn't particularly steep in any of those sections or difficult. And yeah, it never seems to be too far between river crossings. These guys, I think, had been doing a bit of fishing and they just set up here right right next to the track on the on the river, a bit of a camp spot, cooking up some lunch. Had a little fire going there. And there's so many spots like that right on the river where you could literally do that all the way along this track. Good little stash of firewood there. Similar depth to all the other crossings. Some footage there shot uh, from Lucas' vehicle for one across behind me. And you can see over this side there was another camp spot just there on the right hand side as we came up out of the river um, that uh, had been used fairly recently. So. Yeah, plenty of those all the way along here. I think, um, you know, outside of your peak times are probably Christmas and Easter, you, you're going to find a camp spot along the river here um, anytime. Nice uh, longer crossing here where you actually drive down the river somewhat. Again, at the moment, not particularly deep, but uh, the river was up a bit. This would be a fairly challenging crossing, I think.
bumpy. Yeah, she's definitely bouncy. And Luca coming along in the GU. Yeah, these long crossings are a lot of fun to drive. You can see there, the GU's moving a fair bit as well, so there's definitely a few rocks in there. Um, mostly bigger ones, nothing sort of super huge that's going to cause you an issue, at least not that we found. Um, but definitely moves the car around a bit. Traction was good though the whole time. Never felt like we were going to get wheel spin or anything like that. The rocks all felt pretty stable under the tyres. And after that crossing, we are getting closer, uh, pretty close to the end, I think, now of the McAllister River track. And we might actually be on to even what they call the gully track at this point because uh, I think that was our last crossing of the McAllister River and then the gully track follows along here a bit I know it looks like we've got another one coming up there you go not quite yet bit of a rarity for crossings on the McAllister here this one had two alternate exits so Matt had to cross first in the Prado taking the right hand exit there you can see just how scenic it is when, uh, so there's a map shoot before us uh, he's gone across first um, and um, then we know the video us coming across it's always great having somebody along who can do that for us Not a rocky exit on this one, but a nice smooth easy exit. Just yeah, the same. Yeah, doesn't much in see the river's flowing nicely. Just a really scenic spot all the way along the Calisty here. And um, yeah, just in time we've got somebody come up behind us there. So they might have a trail load of wood or something on the back. you making short work at the crossing. And from there, I think that was the last crossing to McAllister. From there we start uh, climbing up away from the river. And you can see here that the track is a little bit rutted in places, so definitely a bit of a clay base here. I think uh, if it had been raining or it was wet, you would definitely struggle coming up here, um, which is why this track is seasonally closed. So by the time this comes up live on YouTube, you've got all of about a week or two to go and check this out and uh, otherwise you're gonna to have to wait uh, till October when the seasonal closures um, reopen it's one of the uh, challenges with the Vic High Country is um, just keeping in mind that from the June long weekend through to October a lot of the tracks in more elevated parts of the high country are seasonally closed and um, when you're planning trips through winter it's just something you really need to be conscious of
generally this section of track was in pretty good condition though it didn't really present too much in the way of challenges some steady climbs but not the big log ones like we'd found on um, the Caledonia River track and the link through to McAllister River um, not, nothing quite that long and it did sort of keep you guessing changing um, you know fr from uh, the more red clay base to this white gravel but yeah looks like it's been probably graded in the last 12 to 18 months and uh, hasn't weathered too much yet I could see in another 12 to 18 months if this tracks not graded some of those steeper sections particularly with the clay base would be very different and likewise here you can see a bit of an overland flow path there um, bit of water on that and this section of track here again you can see ruts already forming part of that looks like probably from vehicle traffic but also just from water flowing and sitting on the track and likewise this uh, section here bit of a climb um, definitely a clay base and um, wasn't soft at all when we're driving it but you can see those ruts there that have been dug out um, definitely meet some people up here when it's been wet and soft and it's probably been a whole different ball game to drive it compared to uh, what it's been like for us on this particular trip this was all solid firm easy to drive stuff plenty of traction Just amazing scenery through through this part of the world, and not surprisingly, there's a there's a decent bit of a climb to get out of here. Now we just passed there the seasonal closure gate, um, so that's on the black soil track, uh, heading up to Bull Plain Spur Road. That's probably about three or four k's from the road, so this whole track is seasonally closed, but the gate, for whatever reason on this particular track, is about three k's from the road. Um, so if you didn't know it was seasonally closed, you'd come in a very long way before you hit that gate. The obligatory uh, 180 degree switchbacks that are prolific through the high country and while this is a long steady climb, it's not nearly as steep as the climbs back on Caledonia River or Butcher Country, not by a long shot. Again, you can see here evidence uh, of the track having been fairly soft. And I think given another 12 to 18 months, it'll be a different track to what we've experienced on this trip today. And from here, it's a downhill run to Glencairn Road, or this section is actually Bull Plain Spur Road. It just depends which which map you look at as to uh, how they're named. But uh, yeah, exiting here onto the public road and heading south towards Lycola. Yeah, I think that sign there actually says Bull Plain Road. And this road was generally in fairly good condition. Just uh, slowed up and waited there a little bit for the other guys to catch up to make sure uh, they made the correct turn. And it wasn't too long here before we uh, hit an intersection with a couple of tracks heading off into other parts of the high country. So we kept left on Glencairn Road towards Lycola and right takes you to Lycola Road. Um, so I'll probably cut out a reasonable amount uh, 
um, have tracked through there. Um, we've just travelled a couple of k's. Again, there wasn't heaps to see along that section. So that's probably about 8 k's, 10 k's uh, that we've uh, covered there from where we turned onto Bull Plain Road before we reached that turn off. And uh, as you saw on the text, the Jameson Lycola Road um, in that section was closed at the time. And uh, so from here, we're heading, heading along Target Creek on Target Creek Road. This is a pretty scenic little drive. And we did hit the Barkley River campground here. And while there's a bridge there in front of us, I did spy out of the corner of my eye a crossing. So it looks like um, when I've gone through and edited the text here, I've got that wrong because we're not at the turn off to the Jamison Lycola Road yet. We're still a couple of k's north of that. So why take the bridge? when you can drive across the river. We'd had a good half an hour driving on pretty much a made road, so we thought, I thought, let's drive the river crossing, because that'll be fun. Again, just eyeballed it, didn't walk it first. Didn't look that deep, but probably a little bit deeper than some of the other crossings. But it's not particularly wide. And we're across it before you know it. A little bit of a trickier exit. You can see it's been dug out and some rocks have been filled in there on the left hand side. So a little bit trickier exit than most of the crossings that we've driven. But the car's climbed up there nice and easy. Bringing the Prado across. And he's plugged up that exit with uh, no challenges whatsoever. Traction control in the modern vehicle certainly does a good job. Luke and bringing the GU across. And likewise, just driven up that little uh, rocky exit with uh, no issues at all. And uh, we're back on the road following the Target Creek down. Now this was super scenic, this section through here. You can see it's not a real wide track. Um, the river's down there on the right. She's a pretty steep drop off. You got a massive cliff on the left hand side. Really nice drive along here. Super scenic. I Look, if you don't mind driving where you got a massive drop off and no guardrail, I highly recommend t taking this trip through from Lycola up to Barclay River Campground. Be a great little camp spot there. There were a lot of people camping there. We didn't go in and check it out, but it looked good. And uh, this drive through here was just outstanding. Again, some of the best driving I've done anywhere in the high country in terms of just amazing scenery because you, you, it's not too densely wooded on that downslope side, so you actually get a really good view of the river in a lot of those places. Not surprisingly, we've got a 180 switchback. That first section down there though, you're above the river. Um, really, really nice. Fortunately, we didn't meet anyone else coming the other way because uh, there really wasn't a lot of room on this section of track. And again, you can get an idea there of just how good those views are out to the side. Track sections like this, I really should get another GoPro and um, mount that on the side of the vehicle or something. It's not too long though and you've climbed up away from the river and working your way up over the hills.
this point. It's a nice scenic drive through the countryside. Uh, the land here on the side of the road is all privately owned. So this here is actually the turnoff to Jameson Lycola Road. Contrary to my previous edit that said that's it. So as I said earlier, Jameson Lycola Road was closed. Um, some of you watching this can probably tell us whether it's been reopened as yet. Uh, and the left hand is the Target Creek Road. It's about a 9k run from here into Lycola. Just a really nice scenic drive through the countryside here. Um, again, this is a public road, not a full drive track. Um, we, uh, you know, given it's a gravel, gravel road, we haven't aired up, so still running the tyres about 25 psi. Uh, at least that's what mine are running at. make a reasonable pace on these roads given they're in really good condition. You just need to be conscious for oncoming vehicles. Sections like this that double back on themselves though you get some good visibility. One of the locals there. As I said this is all private farmland so there are stock grazing here and just something you need to keep aware of. Most of them are pretty well used to vehicles by the look of it. They're not overly bothered by us driving through. That guy there on the left barely moved. Quite a nice drive through here though. These guys were a little less anxious, particularly the little one. He, he wasn't uh, used to vehicles. He was quite happy just trotting along on the road, seemingly. He did find his way off the road there, though, and uh, allow us to go past. Lovely open hillsides, um, nice little creek down the bottom. Again, not a super wide road. You'd be able to get past someone coming the other way along here though if you had to. And, and again, looks like it's probably been relatively recently graded at the time. Bit of a collection there of uh, old Land Rovers. And before not too long, we're back along the McAllister River and heading into Lycola. It's turned into a, a fair bit bigger river by this stage. And here's the turnoff, so you can see there, there's the road close signs on the Jameson Lycola Road. And coming into Lycola, literally this road just rejoins like just a few hundred metres north of the Lycola township. Did take the opportunity since we're here to refuel. I think Matt and Luca both have reasonably long range tanks, um, but having only 75 litres in the Pajero, um, I do like to refuel whenever the opportunity presents itself in the high country. So heading south over the McAllister River. Again, much bigger looking river at this stage compared to the, the river we were crossing further up. Um, I guess it's had a few more tributaries throw, flow into it at this point. So heading south on the bitumen, we took it pretty slow and steady. We knew it was only a few k's on the bitumen, so we didn't actually air up. Um, just kept to about 60 k's an hour. There wasn't a lot of traffic on the road. So we were able to keep it sort of slow and steady rather than airing up just to drive 
five or ten k's and then airing down again when we got onto the Burgoyne's track it just made sense just to take it steady and slow um, there shouldn't be too much heat getting into the tyres quite a nice view through the valley down there and before not too long here we are at the eastern end of the Burgoyne's track I was pretty keen to drive this um, since I missed out on doing it thanks to uh, Krusty uh, from a guy and his troopy had a pretty good idea of what we were getting into um, Krusty drove this um, just a few months ago so I knew that this side of the track had been graded relatively recently that's me just rolling backwards and forwards trying to get my centre diff to lock back in Moving from all-wheel drive, which is probably what I had it in on the road, or maybe two-wheel drive, um, into four high, and then uh, into four low. So it does start off uh, pretty easy, um, no steep climbs or anything like that. Um, you know, nice wide track. Does a good job, I think lulling you into a bit of a false sense of security this eastern side is definitely in its current condition though a lot easier than the western side that is for sure they are chalk and cheese and while there's some decent climbs here uh, we didn't have any traction issues um, i certainly didn't anyway um, again that's something that i'm keen to explore as I start getting out there in the 76 and don't have traction control in that vehicle I'll find out just how much work the traction control has actually been doing for me so yeah, with the early part of the Burgoyne's track uh, you sort of go up and over one ridge and then across the ridge line a little bit last climb up and then descend down to the river This is sort of uh, main, on the approach side anyway, long rocky hill. None of this was particularly loose, um, not for us at this time anyway. So it's just a matter of keeping the throttle control nice and steady, choosing a sensible line and working your way up the hill. Uh, not crazy steep but steeper than it probably looks on camera and a decent length hill as well and these are the ones I find where your vehicle does tend to get tested where you know you've got a good couple of minutes there of a long steady climb it's where your transmission temps will tend to climb up if you're going to have an issue. And yeah, that's the first ridge that we've come over and you can see there heading down and then the track goes up the other side. And then on the other side of the next hill, that's where we head down to the McAllister River. Again, this section of track is still decent condition, but I could see in another 12 to 18 months, if it's not graded again, could be very different. Uh, looks like there's some, some ruts sort of developing already, probably again from when it's been driven uh, in wet conditions. Burgoyne's is a track that is not seasonally closed. Although you've got to have a long hard think about that river crossing at the bottom during winter as to how deep the, the water is and how fast the McAllister's actually flowing as to whether you want to tackle that. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it um, and certainly when I was here on the other side back in um, April, no, 
No, that must have been uh, June or so last year. Uh, could be a bit later than that. I can't remember. Uh, but when I was here last, anyway, last year, second half sometime, whenever that was, it was definitely not at a depth or a flow rate that you wanted to tackle. Um, so just something to keep in mind that even though this one doesn't seasonally close, um, it's not necessarily a track that you're going to be able to drive through all the time. And you're not going to know necessarily till you get down there. This final climb up is so another nice long steady climb, but uh, traction's really good. You can see the uh, track marks there from the, the grader showing you how recently this has all been graded on the, on the sides. Coming up here to the helipad, roughly halfway, probably a little bit more than halfway uh, from the road down to the river, um, but roughly halfway along this helipad. No, you're right. Just had some other guys uh, pull up and just look in there. track ahead. Some great views from up here, certainly on a clear day like this. And looking down the valley there back to the like Polar as well. Great little stop there on the helipad, uh, just enjoying the high country. From here, excepting one little section uh, down the, towards the bottom where we climb up over a little knoll, it's pretty much all downhill from here to the McAllister River. You certainly know that when the track in front of you is disappearing like that, you can't sort of see the next over the next hump. This section is probably not quite as well graded as some of the earlier sections, but definitely has been graded in the last little while. You can see all the rocks pushed off to the sides of the track. Already starting to. Uh, form some definite wheel tracks though. But yeah, definitely not a uh, difficult section to drive here. Just uh, keep it in low range. Uh, use your engine braking and support with your pedal braking if you need to. If you're driving a Pajero, you will need to. Um, other vehicles with uh, lower range gear and you won't need to. These guys here were the ones that uh, said g'day to us up on the helipad. They've just pulled up there. I think that's a Hilux with the tray on the back. We did catch up with him down the bottom at the river crossing as well. Showed us some footage of one of his mates uh, driving the uh, McAllister River crossing in winter. Pretty ballsy, I think it was a GQ. It was um, up over the bonnet, and halfway up the windscreen. Um, but he got through. Not sure uh, I'd be doing that, but um, it's good fun to watch. Not a lot of margin for error if it's that deep and flowing that much. Certainly gets a bit steeper as you get closer towards the river. Um, good solid descent down here. And 
Ford not too long. We're down the bottom here. And there are a lot more tracks down here than I was expecting. That one on the left there is actually the access track down to the river crossing. I just wasn't too sure. This one on the right here kind of looked like it was the main track. Um, so I did drive down there. Didn't really go anywhere. Um, and um, yeah, turned around and came back. There's certainly a lot of tracks this side going left and right. I think looking for opportunities for river access. And yeah, the McAllister's a lot calmer here today. You can see Matt's already gone across to film us coming across. Um, so I really appreciate him doing that for us. Our legs are straight over there. I was looking to the right. And yeah, fortunately I've seen where Matt's standing and realised that the exit I was looking at is not the exit. A little bit deeper here than the earlier McAllister River crossing. Still not a deep crossing though. Wheels and tyres are looking nice and clean with the number of river crossings we've driven today. And Luca and his GU's been through here many a time, pretty sure. Across. Track from here up to the intersection where you then can get down to the uh, McAllister River. There's a there's a spot on the bend which is a good campsite. There were actually people there, uh, and and down to the hut where we're heading. Um, there's a reasonably rocky little start to this track, and a little bit overgrown in places. You can certainly see this hasn't been graded like the uh, the track on the other side. too long before we start climbing up and we reach this uh, intersection here so on the far right there pretty sure that was Green Hills track no that's the way we're going so yeah the left hand side was down to the, the bend then and this takes us up to the main intersection bit of a rabbit war on this side of Burgoyne's there's a few tracks everywhere um, Makes more sense when you're actually there rather than watching it on the video. A little bit of a wombat hole there. A um, bit of a beeline there on the left hand side that somebody pushed through. I certainly wasn't going to drive that. And this is probably uh, a little more difficult driving. Still not difficult, but more difficult than the other side of the Burgoynes for sure. There's a few wombat holes here in places. Um, definitely something to, to, to be conscious of and it's a lot narrower track. So up here we can see these vehicles. This is the intersection I thought we were at just before. So um, this is where we can get down to the hut or Green Hills track or the other track on the right takes us back across to where I camped last time. Sharp-eyed among you might recognise that spot straight ahead. I nearly ended up camping there last time I was here because that was one of the spots where the, the car stopped going. The guys that were going to tow me out came along, jump eluded me and I got going. And um, we got over the other side but then they decided it was too late and too dark and they weren't going to be able to tow me out after all. Um, but that was then. Uh, so yeah, heading down to the Morning Glory Hut. So I did come down here last time. And there was a couple of young guys in a 100 series and in a GQ. They actually camped down here that I ran into last time. 
cracking little spot, really well maintained hut. Not a lot of grass in this camp area, but a um, few spots where you can find some reasonably level ground to uh, set up your stretcher. Hut's got a bit of a uh, flagstone flooring, fireplace, and for some reason there's a collection of alcoholic beverage bottles. And this one's been set up with a bit of a servery there. Um, and we did notice some solar powered electric lighting as well. Alrighty, we're camped up on the uh, McAllister River at the Maiden Glory Hut. Cracking spot here. Uh, access down to the river is a little challenging. The hut's just up there. Um, I think I'll turn this way because the sun's behind me otherwise um, yeah just been in for a swim um, absolutely awesome uh, very refreshing after a long day on the tracks today we have uh, we started at Howard Hut and we uh, did Caledonia River track and then from there we pushed on and did um, McAllister River track um, and then followed that through to Lycola um, Glenmore Road or something I think into Lycola. Lycola came down Burgoynes off Lycola Road across the McAllister down to the Morning Glory Hut here and this is where we're camping tonight. Bloody epic camping spot, a little bit challenging to get to but so worth it. Fresh caught river trout being cooked in some foil over charcoal on the Drifter Stockton fire pit. Doesn't get much better than this and we've got the Italian chef here overseeing things. <laughs> and that fish did taste good. So that's the fish Matt caught uh, earlier today in the McAllister River. So again, doesn't come much fresher than that. We got the camp set up um, and it's actually was starting to get a bit dark and we could hear this vehicle up on the west side of the Burgoynes. So handheld Sony zooming in huge zoom here so sorry for the wavy, wavy footage um, but um, yeah looks like they were maybe getting slightly more than they bargained for um, he's moving anyway um, look guys hope you've enjoyed this video thanks for watching as always like this video if you liked it if you've got some questions put them in the comments down below and um, I'll leave you to see whether this guy uh, gets out of here or not if you want to stay watching to, to see that, as I said, shot from our campsite across the river a couple of k's away, handheld zoom. So not the best footage, but um, yeah, you can see there just how steep some of those western sections of that Burgoyne's track actually are. So have a great day, everyone. See you in the next video. That's a pistol.
love to know what was going on. Great watch. I'd say he's stopping on the washdowns just to catch his breath. Yep, he's up and around the corner. Gone. Good on him. Yeah.